In this video, we will show you how to replace your front lower control arm on the Chevy Trailblazer. This is part of your front suspension located behind your front wheel. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. Safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so your wheel's off the ground with the suspension hanging. Once you've done that, we'll continue on to removing the center cover, all six of our 19 millimeter lug nuts, and then the wheel. Now that we have the wheel out of the way, let's have a look at our outer tie rod end. We have to remove this from the steering knuckle. It's gonna be very simple. We'll remove this locking cotter pin, remove the nut, give the knuckle a couple loving bonks just so we can bring this down so we can safely remove it. We'll set this aside. We'll use our 21 millimeter to remove the mounting nut. Now once I have that off of there, it's always a good idea to give it a close inspection, make sure it is reusable. We'll start it back on just a couple threads here, give this a couple loving taps, it will break free, but having the nut on there prevents it from falling down and potentially hurting you. Now that we have that out of the way, Let's pay attention to our ABS wire. That's mounted directly to the frame. We're going to have to disconnect it from the frame, the control arm, and the steering knuckle. We'll start at the frame. For this connector, you'll find that you have a gray locking tab. I'll make my way right into the center here, remove that gray locking tab, and we'll give it a close inspection, set it aside. You do need to reuse this. If it's broken, replace it. Now we need to go ahead and unlock this. Right where my thumb is, there's a locking tab. Squeeze that in and separate it. A quick inspection on each side to make sure there's no corrosion and we'll continue on by prying this out of place. For this, you can use a trim tool or a screwdriver. We'll follow it up here. Pull that out of there. Once again, if you needed to, you could use a trim tool. Pop that out, make our way up here. Separate it from the steering knuckle. There we are. Now this cable does make its way right behind the knuckle here. It's held in place to a bracket that we will remove along this side. Leave some pliers, just carefully squeeze in on this. We don't wanna break it because we have to reuse this area. Slide that out. Now the next thing you wanna do is tie up this wiring harness so it does not get damaged in any way. Let's use some tape. Now in that same area that we removed the bracket for the ABS wire, we also need to remove the bracket for the brake flex hose. Use a 10 millimeter to remove both of the bolts. Now we can make our way along the front side of the knuckle here. We're going to start removing the caliper and caliper bracket from the steering knuckle. You'll find that you have two 18 millimeter headed bolts holding this in place. We'll remove the pair. Carefully take the caliper out of place, inspect the brake pads, and then hang it aside, putting no pressure on our flex hose. There's one of our bolts. We'll go ahead and start this right back in just a couple threads while we remove the final bolt along the bottom. While this is off, go ahead and inspect those pads. As I had mentioned, if it looks like they're worn at an angle or damaged in any way, Now's a perfect time to start replacing your brakes. We'll set this aside.
Now we can remove the brake rotor. We'll give it a quick inspection and set that aside. Move along to your 36 millimeter axle nut. We'll remove this, use a hammer and punch in the center here and just break the axle free from the bearing. Now we'll make our way just below that area to the lower ball joint area. We're going to remove the locking cotter pin, remove that nut. We'll remove the nut, give it a close inspection and start it back on just a couple threads. Use a 22 millimeter for this. Now we can pause here and make our way up to the upper ball joint. To disconnect this upper ball joint, you'll find that you have a 15 millimeter pinch bolt that goes through from the front towards the rear. There's a 15 millimeter mounting nut in this area. Let's remove this and carefully break this free from the control arm. As you can tell, our ball joints separated from the upper control arm fairly easily. If yours did not, you can carefully use a chisel inside this area with a hammer and just separate it a little bit. Once you've done so, this should slide down and out. Take hold of your steering knuckle. Now we'll use a hammer down along the bottom of the knuckle where it connects to that lower ball joint. We're going to tap on this a little bit, causing vibration. It should drop down to that ball joint nut. Now we can slide this off of the ball joint and remove it from the axle at the same time. Remove the knuckle with your wheel bearing assembly attached and set that aside. Now with that knuckle out of the way, let's continue on in this area. Use a 24 millimeter to remove this nut and then we'll use a pickle fork to separate this from the inboard bushing. Now that we have movement from this area, pause, and we'll make our way to the lower sway bar link. Now to remove this, you'll find in the center of the stud, you have an area for a seven millimeter Allen head socket. We'll also be using a 21 millimeter wrench to remove that nut. Let's continue following to where the control arm meets the control arm bracket. Now what we need to do here is loosen up each of these bolts. We don't have to fully remove them because the new control arm comes as a control arm with the bracket. We'll use a 21 millimeter on each side here. Some movement from that one. Now we can make our way back to this area and we'll gently separate it. At this point, this control arm will come swinging down. Now we can start removing the three 21 millimeter headed bolts that hold the control arm bracket to the frame of the vehicle. You'll find two along the back here and one right up along the front of that bracket. At this point, we can continue on prying this out of position. Now keep in mind, this control arm is extremely heavy, so as you start pulling it out, make sure you're not underneath this area.
There it is, friend. Now, once you have that control arm bracket out of the area, it's important to make sure you clean and inspect the mounting areas where the new bracket and control arm will slide into. And use a wire brush, whatever you might happen to have. Okay, friend, let's get ready to install our brand new lower control arm with bracket. We'll take this and slide that bracket right into the frame of the vehicle here. It should slide right in. If it doesn't, you could use a rubber mallet and give it a couple loving bonks. At this point, we'll carefully make our way underneath this area, start in all three of our mounting bolts, and then snug them up. We'll start in all three of these mounting bolts by hand, of course. We'll torque the front bolt to 192, and then the two rear bolts to 170. Now we can swing this up. We'll get this aligned. We'll bottom this out and torque it to 82 foot pounds. Now let's start bringing some upward pressure underneath the lower control arm. While we're bringing this up, we wanna be paying attention to the sway bar link. We'll align that with the hole, slide it through. Continue bringing the lower control arm up to the original ride height position and then we can tighten our mounting nuts that hold the control arm to the control arm bracket. Slide this into place. Start the nut on there. We'll torque this to 17 foot-pounds. Now we'll continue going up into that original ride height position. Now we can continue on to tightening each one of our lower control arm to lower control arm bracket mounting bolts. To do this, I'll be using a 19 millimeter wrench to hold the bolt side, and we'll use a 21 millimeter to tighten the nut. Torque this to 96. Do the same to the rear. Remove the support from under your control arm. Before we continue on by putting on the knuckle, it's important to make sure you clean and inspect the axle shaft. Uh, 
Assuming everything looks good, we'll use some copper anti-seize along the splined area here, not necessarily on the threaded area. Now we can install our knuckle with wheel bearing. When doing so, we want to slide the axle directly along the back side of that wheel bearing. It should come right through. As we continue on, we'll also be aligning our lower ball joint with the bottom hole on the knuckle. Start on your ball joint nut. Now let's pay attention up along the top here. We need to align the upper ball joint with the upper control arm, bring the upper control arm down, and then we'll start through that pinch bolt. Maneuver this around as needed. We don't want to cause any damage. Now, if you're not replacing your pinch bolt nut, it's a good idea to use some thread locker. We have a brand new nut here. Let's get the torque wrench on here. Torque it to 30 foot pounds. Let's start on that lower ball joint nut. We'll bottom it out. Now we can torque this to 79 foot pounds. When doing so, you might find that the steering knuckle will want to turn on you, so I'll hold it in place using a long pry bar. Now let's continue on to prepare to install our brake rotor. Before we install the rotor, it's important to make sure you clean the mating surface of the wheel bearing hub and the backside of your brake rotor. Go ahead and use a wire brush and some parts cleaner. We'll apply some copper anti-seize here, and now we'll just clean the backside of the rotor and prepare to install it. Get the brake rotor on there. When I do this, I like to have a lug nut holding it in place so it doesn't move around and potentially hurt me as I continue. Let's install the brake caliper. Now we can move along to installing our caliper on the area. Go ahead and slide those pads right over that brake rotor. We'll get this in position, start in both of our mounting bolts, snug them up, and torque them to 118 foot-pounds. Let's take hold of that ABS wire. We'll slide it through that bracket that we just mounted to the steering knuckle. Just press that in. Double check to make sure that's completely secured. You don't want it falling off and potentially damaging the ABS wire. Let's continue reconnecting that. Press this in here. This will go into the slot along the bottom of your control arm. Just need to find that. Get this one in here, press that in. Get this on here, press it in, listen for a click. Put in your gray lock. This should slide right in here. Now we'll press this into the frame. Time for the outer tire rod end. We'll start this in, snug it up, torque it to 44 foot pounds. The next thing we need to do is pay attention to the slots on the nut in comparison to the hole that goes through the stud of the tie rod end. 
we need that to be aligned. If for some reason it is not aligned, we need to continue tightening until the very next slot is, and then we can put in our locking cotter pin. All right, since ours is lined up, we don't have to continue tightening at all. We'll peen this over so there's no way the nut can loosen up on us while we're driving down the road. Now we can remove this. Install your axle nut. When you put this on, you never want to use an impact gun. If you were to over tighten this, you could cause serious damage to the bearing. We'll just use a ratchet and snug it up. Now we can torque this to 103 foot pounds. What you'll find is to prevent this from spinning, I used a pry bar coming across the lug studs, being extremely careful not to damage the threading. This comes diagonally down to the ground, holding it in place for me. Now we can install our wheel. Start on all six of your 19 millimeter lug nuts. We'll bottom these out, get the wheel back on the ground, and we can torque these to 100 foot pounds. With the wheel safely on the ground, we'll torque these in a crisscross manner. If you have a center cover, you can put that on now. Have a look along the back side. You'll find that you have a small diagram of a valve stem. This is the valve stem on your wheel. We'll align this area and tap it into place. Okay, friend, we've got our vehicle back together. At this point, take it for a road test, listen for funny noises, and get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.